Have you run out of GPIO pins on your Sonoff Basic? Want to add more to it? Do you want to add three buttons? Some additional LEDs? Button for the light? Button for up fan? A button for down fan? But simply don't have enough GPIO pins? Well, here's your solution. The MCP23017. This is part two of the series of covering the I2C chips on Tasmoda. So if you missed that video, be sure and check out part one of this series. Let's get to it. So the last chip we're going to talk about is very powerful and we're going to show some various scenarios used because it's an input and an output. It's just like the other ones. You have voltage, ground, clock, and data. But where it gets interesting is on this particular breakout board, you have B0, A0, but it's B0 through B7 and A0 through A7. Do not confuse these with analog inputs. These are all digital input and outputs. This is the 16 channel board. They also make another chip that's also usually in a dip style chip that's eight channel instead of the 16 channel. Once you plug it in and see it's actually on the Tasmoda GUI, you actually won't see anything. But if you actually go into the console and do the I squared C scan, you will see that the, if the chip is initialized. If it's not, you may have to, according to the wiki, you can change the address of the chip utilizing by grounding the there's a, up at the top left you'll see there's a zero one and two and these are you'll apply the combination of ground or 3.3 volts to utilize the address you want the default address is 0x20 and just to note you will need to compile your own tasmoda bin file that actually utilizes the mcp 23017 so before we get into our little test scenario with this chip this table that will help you out a lot because on the bottom of the chip there's the a0 through a7 and then the B0 through B7, and that's gonna show you it corresponds to the different pin names. And the commands we're gonna be using here is called sensor 29, and you can send the sensor 29 through the console, or, or you can also send the sensor 29 through MQTT. With the several commands, you'll type these at the console for what you want. And you always will do sensor 29, if you just want to reset everything, you can do sensor 29 reset and or sensor 29 reset one, etc. To configure these individually is you'll do sensor 29 and you'll label the pin and then the pin mode and whether you have a pull up or not. The pin mode, there's input, it just floats. Be careful with that because unless you have something that's pulling it up or pulling it down or you have the input and it'll interrupt on change basically it'll send an mqtt message it will send an mqtt message anytime it changes from low to high or from high to low so that might be something useful for say a, a door that opens and closes then you have the other options of when it changes just to low or it changes just to high and then the pull up is there is zero or one and take note it is a weak internal pull up that's on the chip so if you need something that has a little more oomph to it, you may want to do your own external pull up. So we're going to start fresh here. What I have here is a touch button that does a latching of high or low. I have an AM312 motion sensor and I have three LEDs on a breadboard with some resistors to cut back the load. So basically we're going to have two inputs and then three outputs. We're going to do sensor 29 0 pin 0 comma 5 for the setup. And what that is, we're going to do pin 0 5 is the output and it defaults. You can do a, add the 0 and it'll default to off on a reset power up and our defaults to on. And one very important thing about this board is during a reboot, it's not going to just flicker your pins for a split second. So sensor 29, pin 0, pin mode 5, and default to off. And if you look in the top of the video, a sensor 29, pin 0, if you do a T, it's going to toggle. And where I'm getting those commands is back in here, you'll see you can send an on, an off, or a T to toggle. So we'll just do a toggle. And you'll see we get our red LED. So we'll set up sensor 29, 
pin one comma five comma zero that's my next LED and then we'll do a sensor 29 pin one toggle and there's the green LED and then sensor 29 pin eight because I have it on B zero comma five comma zero I can figure that as output and we'll do sensor 29 eight comma T and that turns on the white LED if we send over the sensor 29 command with a payload of say 8T that would actually toggle that and you can run that in a node red automation or you could do it in a home assistant comma sensor 29 you do 8 comma T and you'll see it toggles it and if you publish it again you see it toggles it back so to do the inputs do sensor 29 pin 3 comma 2 because we want to know when it changes whether it's high to low or low to high and then I do not need a pull up on either of these devices so then we'll do sensor 29 2 comma 2 comma 0 that's my second pin and I want to know when it changes no matter which state and I don't need a pull up now you'll notice once you have those in if you look at the console you'll see this event and it shows you the time and it shows this MCP 230XX interrupt shows you the pin and this is the state is went to low and it shows you the millisecond since it last had an event so one should be there's the motion triggering and it should toggle back to zero and the button you can see changes and it goes high and then we toggle it goes low we can do a rule and the rule if you want to do rule one if we look here we can get the rule they're showing here to use one of these as a button to toggle a power relay well we don't have a power relay on this device change this rule up here so we'll say on event MCP interrupt D0 why don't we don't want D0 D3 if it equals a 1 which means I push that button we're going to do a publish of MCP slash button 1 end on oh, oh we got to do the value yes and then end on and then we'll rule 1 1 turn it on push that button it published to an MCP slash button one topic of the payload of yes. One rule I did already, I did on motion, which is D2, when it goes to low, it's gonna do a backlog of sensor 29, it's gonna turn zero pin off, and it's gonna turn number one pin on. Then, if the motion is triggered, it's gonna do the reverse. And that's just going to toggle the red and green lights back and forth every time there's motion. So you should see the LED on the left. And the motion goes clear. It goes green. We'll put our hand back. And we got red. An easy way you can have it trigger different relays or do whatever. And you can tr have other pins trigger other pins on the same board. So another rule I worked up. When we touch the button it actually will turn the white LED on and it'll stop the, the motion from triggering back and forth. And I just did a using some backlogs and actually in the backlog I actually have it turn rule one off when the button is pushed and then when the button is untoggled it turns rule one back on. And you can put as many backlog commands as you want of course within the confines of the capacity of the rule. So if we push the button turns the two LEDs off and turns the white on and it stops the motion triggering back and forth. If we do turn it off, turns the toggling back and forth again of the motion and turns the white LED off. So that's just a little quick scenario. As you can see, that quickly adds 16 input and output pins that you could use with various buttons or LEDs for your automations using on your Tasmoda devices. Be sure to share in the comments your different ideas that you may find to do with this expansion board that truly opens up any Tasmoda device or Sonoff or whatever type of switch that you're doing. So to look at one real use case of the NCP 23017, 
on the iFan Zero 2, there's really only two GPIO pins that are easy to get to, and that's the TX and the RX pins on the programming header. So what I did is I took a small proto board and some female header pins. I soldered in some jumpers and some male 90 degree headers. I soldered in some resistors for the LEDs. Should have went with a little more resistance. I think I used ended up using 4.7 Ks or 3.8 K, I believe. They're not as bright in real life as they are shown on the video. The camera kind of blows out LEDs. What I have here is there's three resistive touch buttons behind the panel that are a momentary touch. And I have two RGB LEDs, so that takes up six output channels. And then I also have a white LED. For the output, you can see here on pins D9, D10, these are all listed as the outputs. And currently these two are on. And what I use the panel for is I use the white light to show if like a door is open in the house. One of the LEDs, if it's red, the dryer's on. If it's blue, the washing machine's on. If it's purple, from the mixture of those two colors, then the washer and the dryer is on. The other LED shows the alarm panel current status, whether the alarm is armed or disarmed, just showing a simple red or a green for the status of the alarm. And you push everything over using MQTT. You can either use the YAML automations to do the MQTT publishes, or you can use Node Red like I've done in this example here. And the timestamp, that's just to, for me to give buttons to push in if you're not familiar with Node Red, just for the sake of this video. You can see one of my below ones is I look for the doors changed on Home Assistant, and then I get the door state, see if the doors are open or closed, and then I turn the white light on or turn the white light off based on the door state. And all that's doing is doing a switch node and setting the payload to 15T, and then it sends it over to the command, my Sonoff Master Bedroom Fan 02, and it does a command of sensor 29. And so that's all that does. And same thing for when the doors change, it will send pin 9 on for it to turn the light on, or it'll do pin 9 off. And it sends those over. And you can see on the console when we were pushing those buttons, it was receiving the commands to toggle the different pins. It's just a real simple way to show you how a real scenario where I've used this chip. So a little bonus feature here. Say for instance you have a temperature sensor or we'll use this lux sensor. You don't always want the value to be sent across through MQTT just if it's the same all the time. What if you only want to see it when it's published to a certain special topic only when it changes within a certain delta? Well, a simple way to do that is utilizing the rules and you don't have to rely on the telemetry or the telemetry time or anything. It'll just published to a new topic based on the actual value of how much of a change. You take the sensor, which is the BH1750, you set a rule, and you say on illuminance, sensor type of the BH1750 pulled straight off the console. So with this, this one here, is you say on BH1750, illuminance, which is gonna change, is greater than var one what you'll do is you'll store the value in var1. So every time it loops through, it's going to do a backlog command, which is a set of commands. So it's going to say store in var1 the current value. Then it will publish to mcu slash lux topic, and you could change this to whatever topic you want, the current value. Then it says store in var2 the actual value, then it will add 100 to var1 and subtract 100 from var2. Then a second rule in the same rule buffer, it's very similar, says less than var2 will store the var2 value, will publish the value, and var1 will save the value and will add 100 to var1 and will subtract 100 from var2. And so what that's doing, it's setting the min and the max every time the value is meets the threshold. So to see that, if we look in the console, we'll move the sensor here in the light, and you can see what it does. It published 209 
to MCU Lux. It set VAR 1 as 209. It added 100. It set at 309. It subtracted 109. So what would happen is you'll notice, because our telemetry messages, the Lux is changing ever so slightly, 155, 151, etc. But it has to go above 309 or below 109 before it runs the rule again and stores the new min and max thresholds. So you could use this not just to go to a topic. You could have it turn on another switch, turn on something based if it got too dark, or notify you if it got too hot somewhere based on a temperature sensor, do a humidity for, like, say, turn on a fan if it, the humidity got too high somewhere, say, in a bathroom from somebody taking a shower. You could do multiple things with the rules because you could publish straight to other topics. And it, we'll put this up again. It's not going to continue to publish to this topic until it gets outside of the min and the max utilizing that rule. So thanks for watching. Hopefully there's something you learned here that you can apply to your home. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so you can catch our next video. And y'all take care.